Hi, this is John Goodman again. I'm self-isolating in my condo, and I hope you are doing the same. And uh, today we're going to talk about uh, direct primary care. Now, it was some years ago that I met some wealthy people who told me they had a concierge doctor. I said, well, what's that? They said, well, they pay several thousand dollars, and they can talk to their doctor by phone and email and other ways. Other ways. And they can talk at night and they can talk on the weekends. So I thought that's really cool. You know, I wish I had enough money to do that. Well, as time has passed, the cost of that kind of medical care has come way down. Uh, Atlas MD in Wichita, Kansas uh, developed a model uh, where you get all primary care 24 seven and it only costs $50 for the mother and $10 for a child every month. And that brings concierge care, uh, down to where it fits in the budget of, of most people. Now, um, if it's so good, you wonder why employers aren't doing it more often. And uh, we have with us today William Short, and he is CEO of a company called Acresa. And what they do is they put the employers together with the direct, what's now called direct primary care doctors. And uh, William, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having me. You were telling me a little earlier, uh, you, uh, you have quite a few employers you work with. Can you give us some idea of how many employees are covered by direct primary care through your company? Um, we have been able to add about 15,000 participants uh, to the platform through employers. And am I correct to say that you're the largest company in the country that's going through employers to make it possible for the employees to have this kind of relationship with a doctor? Yes, you know, we, we believe that we are the largest uh, in terms of concentrating on bringing physicians and primary care physicians in this direct primary care framework to uh, employers uh, across the country. Let me tell you what I would like to do if I was an employer. Uh, I would like to say to my employees, I want you to handle all of your primary care and I'm gonna put money into an account, like a health savings account, and you make your own deal with the doctor. If you wanna talk by phone or email or Skype, or you wanna talk on weekends, that's between you and the doctor. Is there something that prohibits me from doing that? Currently, with the health savings account, unfortunately, direct primary care violates the significant medical coverage rule. However, through an HRA account, um, those types of funds could be allocated in the exact manner that you mentioned in terms of a set amount could be set aside by the employer and the employer says, here's our primary care solution, go forth and uh, choose the primary care physician of your choice and uh, have those funds paid um, out of that account. And is that what uh, employers are doing? Hmm. So employers um, are doing a number of things along those lines. Um, one, specifically in the self-insured space, they are making the direct primary care, the prospective primary care part of their plan. Um, and so they're saying, to similar to what you just described, they're saying, we're going to allocate so many dollars for prospective direct primary care programs, and then allowing the individuals to go onto the Cressa platform and, you know, shop or pick their physician for themselves or their spouses and their children of their choice uh, based on the offers that are in the system and being made available. And is this option popular with employees? Very popular. Um, a couple things that makes it very popular is one, they get to choose. They get to choose the physician or clinic or offering that's best for them. And they also get to be able to switch throughout the plan year, throughout the process, if they're not happy with the service being delivered. And so the individual patients and participants in terms of the feedback is, they view this as a additional benefit being offered by their employer. Think of it as a lot of times they say, well, oh, this is concierge medicine that I'm able to achieve through my employer and they view it and they actually are very uh, receptive to it and, and uh, give it very high marks. And so in the typical case, does the employee pay anything when he talks to the doctor by phone or by email or is that free? So typically in the vast majority of all the plans on the platform and, you know, I would say 98% of all the programs, 
everything is included based on what the physician has decided to be part of the plan. The system can manage multiple plan offerings that can be selected by the participant and the individual. But the vast majority of them is, it is a monthly uh, program that says, you can text me, you can call me, you can come into the office, I'm gonna take care of you, take care of your, you know, your, your health needs here on the primary care level, all included in my monthly plan. You know, one of the things I discovered several years ago was that organized medicine has been in general hostile <laughs> to telemedicine. And they have pushed uh, regulations at the federal level and right here in the state of Texas, uh, make it difficult for doctors to talk to patients by phone, email, and Skype. Um, where do you find, uh, or where have you found doctors, before there was a coronavirus a problem, uh, did you find it difficult to find doctors who wanted to deal with patients in this way? Mm. So absolutely not. Uh, specifically in primary care with what they're dealing with in the fee-for-service world, the physicians are clamoring for this type of process by which they can manage the individual risk on this monthly subscription basis versus the fee-for-service, you know, uh, what I would call the hamster wheel of trying to see someone pay someone to process a claim in order to get paid for routine care, uh, you know, 30, 60, 90 days in the future. Um, the adage that we, we hear all the time is you don't use car insurance to pay for gas. Why would we use a health insurance financial risk mitigation program to pay for primary routine care that is more efficient delivered when the patient and the physician agree on what the, the payment process should be? Uh, it, on, on the employee side, um, are they typically paying a portion of the monthly fee that goes to the doctor or does the employer pay for all that? Uh, it depends. Um, there are situations uh, in the system, the system can handle both iterations where the employer pays for all. The employer sets a, an amount that they're contributing through the plan where if a patient chooses a plan that's more than that the employer has contributed, they can then, um, you know, upgrade or contribute their percentage or their amount to the amount of the plan that they've selected all the way to the employers contributing nothing and the total uh, burden of the, the cost falls on the individual or and or the family to pay for. Now I assume that a few years ago all these employers had a plan that looked like a traditional Blue Cross plan paid doctors fee for service. Uh, now that they've switched over, uh, does the employer save money on this? Oh, yes. So what we have seen uh, that our partners have shared or our employer clients on the system have shared back with us is anywhere from a 20% uh, percent to on the high end, a 40% savings. The number one thing that came back was, I know my doctor, I have a relationship with my doctor, I call them first. You know, if you go to a minute clinic, um, an urgent care center, and you've got chest pain, they're not going to probably do much, and some will, but some other based on their insurance that they have, they're going to probably say, eh, we're not gonna take the risk that that's a heart attack or bad Chinese food. The difference between Chinese food and a bad heart attack when it's done in an ER, in a setting where it's sent to the ER or not, is tremendous in, in plan costs. So with urgent care and ER visits falling off because the patients are saying, I know my physician, I'm, I have a relationship and I have access because the incentives have changed in terms of the payment process in our opinion, that drives savings. And then the savings start accumulating um, that they don't have to go into the office to get a prescription refill. They can text or call their direct primary care physician, which takes out you know, time in their day and exposure. So the savings is pretty phenomenal by redirecting these payments to the physician directly based on personal patient choice. Now, can you tell us very quickly what your company does? I mean, why, 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 does, it, why does the employer, the employees, and the doctor, why do they need you? What, what service do you perform? So the number one thing we do is being able to affiliate physicians together to allow the employer and the participants to have choice. The second piece to it, by affiliating these groups together, you, you know, take the insurance, what we believe it's best designed for, and that's the catastrophic coverage, knowing what these physicians are doing, so you can get the appreciation with, say, a stop loss carrier is also critical. So being able to roll up what the plans are that people are selecting. You know, maybe plan A is, covers X, Y, Z, and plan B covers A, B, C, 
Understanding what people are picking, we believe, is important. So understanding that component. And then finally, the administrative costs in terms of adding employees, terminating employees, planning for current year planning, open enrollment planning, allocating the correct funds to reconcile for choice is complex. So the third question is how is it administered uh, from a flow? And so the system um, does all three. Let me ask you one last question. Uh, is the federal government standing in the way? Are there things that, uh, that it needs to do to make your life better? And the thing that's holding this back in the direct primary care is the significant medical coverage rule for HSAs. It needs to be a qualified medical expense. It needs to be a 213D expense because if we're going to put money in an HSA and people have a, quali a qualified high up the health plan, why not give them the ability to pay for and, and have as part of the program, not violating the, the rule, that they can pay their physician directly, their primary care physician. Every model showcases when you have a relationship with a primary care physician, you know who they are and you have access. Your outcomes are better. Um, and so it just makes perfect sense a perfect marriage to bring DPC and health savings accounts together. But that's so just, exactly so right. just All right, so sorry to interrupt, but yeah. just so we all understand, are you saying that right now today the employer can't put money into the health savings account of the employee and then the employee goes and makes his deal with the direct primary care physician? You can't do that? Currently, with the direct primary care, that is correct. Um, you can't do it. Now, with the CARE Act and you know, the, uh, they've made an exemption for telemedicine, that telemedicine is no longer violates the 223 definition of uh, high deductible health plans. And what we believe telemedicine is, virtual primary care is a version of telemedicine. Those do play. But DPC in the form of your office visits and everything that DPC physicians have come up with in terms of improving and offering their plan can't participate because it violate in the currently violates the significant medical coverage rule with HSAs. I hope all our viewers are aware of the fact that uh, so many of these newfound freedoms are temporary. And when the virus goes away and the deregulation goes away as well, unless we do something to make it permanent. William, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for giving us your time. Thank you. Have a good day. Yeah. Thanks so much for spending time with me this morning. I think you know we're a nonprofit organization. We depend on voluntary contributions from people like yourself, and, and that's the only way we can sustain the work we're doing. If you like what we're doing, you want us to continue doing it, then we do need your help. And on the page below this video, there's an opportunity for you to give to us. And if you have a few extra shekels in your pocket, uh, now's the time we could use the help.